Hi everyone, welcome, and in this quick video I'm just going to be showcasing the NavMesh AI that I've built and I'm going to be showing its settings and you know some uses that um, you can use this AI to you know for great effect that normally other AIs on the marketplace don't really cover. So basically I, with this pack I'm just trying to move away from you know the spline path kind of movement that people always do with vehicles but that doesn't really allow you to change stuff at runtime and it's not usable with a NavMesh. That, for example, if you want, you know, the paths or the destinations to be random and not predefined, the, the spline method doesn't really work. So this, uh, that's where this system comes into play. So what can you do with it? Well, right now, um, if you click play, you can see that the vehicle um, will move to these paths that you will see over here. And you can see that the path points are being created at runtime, so they are changing. That basically means that... Um, for example, if you have a player in the middle of the path, the vehicle will go around it, or anything that basically affects the nav mesh, like this pillar, will make that the vehicle will change its path at runtime. Now you can see these uh, boxes because if you go into Blueprints, Test Vehicle, and Test AI Vehicle Pawn, I have activated over here in the component to draw debug path points. Now if you disable this, uh, you're, not, you're no longer going to see that. Now one of the things that this pack is great is, or this system, is that it can change uh, its path at runtime. So I'm going to show you using this pillar uh, how you can do that. So first of all, you need to make sure that uh, this, your recast nav mesh over here, that if you find it, it needs to be dynamic. So right now it's static. Let's change it to dynamic. And let's, I'm going to find this pillar, and I'm also going to make it movable so I can move it when, while I'm simulating the game. So right now, I'm going to press P to hide the nav mesh, and I'm going to click play. You can see that right now the, the vehicle, oh sorry, I need to enable back draw debug path point so we can see that. Let's click play. Now you can see that you have this path points over here. So I'm gonna want this path point over here to be blocked by this pillar. So I'm just gonna be moving it, and you can see that the vehicle is updating uh, the path points over here. And I believe uh, the the vehicle will now try to go to, you know, sideways on the pillar or you know to the side and is going to go around. But now if I go over here, you can see that the vehicle is already detecting a new path and is going around. And now he's going to stop. It actually slide. That's very cool. Into the path point. Now it's not going exactly to the position. Why? Because I have this reached goal acceptance value uh, at 0.1. Now if you make this value smaller, it's going to try to reach the exact position. But I, I don't really like that. I want the vehicle to have you know some margin of error. And I don't want him to go exactly to the spot because that can create some problems. So I like this. Now you have the path point reach threshold over here that I should explain. Now each one of these paths that you see um, that are red. Now the vehicle needs to get close enough to them that it detects, okay, I've reached this path, so now I'm going to go to the next one. Now this distance over here, uh, in this case it's 150 centimeters or a meter and a half, the vehicle is going to think, okay, I'm going to move to the next path point now. If you make this value too small, what's basically going to happen is that it's going to try to go exactly to the path point. So for example, if he slides like he did over here, he's going to try to go sideways or reverse to go exactly into the point and then continue to the next one. So if you make that too accurate, uh, is going to look, uh, you know, it's not going to drive itself naturally. But with those kind of values, you're going to find that, that you will, uh, you know, behave more uh, realistically. But you can play around with all these values and test for yourself, of course. Now, the acceleration multiplier is how fast does the vehicle accelerate compared to a human uh, input. So in this case, it's one to one, so it will accelerate the same as a human. If you want to make it less, uh, you can lower this value. I don't think if you go above one, it's going to do anything because the vehicle stats are actually driven by the vehicle movement component of your vehicle. That's why it's so great because it can be used with any custom component or custom vehicle system, and it will always use the steering settings, the the engine settings, everything else that the player would control. This will also be used by the AI, so that's why it's so great. And basically, you can just limit, if you want it to accelerate slower, you can lower this value. The same, th the same thing with the max speed. Uh, right now, it's at 0 0.7. If I put a uh, lower value, it will uh, you know, cap its speed at a lower value, or more, uh, it will drive itself to the full potential of you know, a player input, basically, or this stats over here. Now, this is useful, for example, if you don't want vehicles to move too fast or too slower, you can always change this value. I left it at the default 0 0.7 just because uh, I like that value when I tested my stuff out. And now the movement update interval is basically, it's over here more for performance reasons. So you can see that the vehicle is moving 
right away. And you can see his, his movement is quite, um, you know, smooth. So it updates its direction or the wheels, uh, you know, pretty often, especially like when he's doing like curves like over here. Um, now, the way the reason that it uh, looks so smooth like this, it's because the vehicle is updating 0 0.01 times, uh, you know, every 0 0.01 times. Uh, and that means that it's basically every tick. Now, obviously, if you have a lot of vehicles or, you know, your game is, for example, for mobile, this might be a little bit too much and it will affect performance. So if you want to lower this value, uh, it will make uh, the movement a little bit more choppier or it might not, you know, uh, turn as much times. And it might actually create problems if the path points are too close together. Um, but you can always alter this value slightly to gain better performance. For example, if I alter this to 0 0.05, it's going to be five times cheaper in terms of performance. And you can see that the vehicle will, uh, you know, is going to be more linear with its path, it's not going to work as well. But generally, it will, you know, it's not going to be really that noticeable. Let's see over here in the curve how it behaves. You can see it's kind of, you know, now it's going to tar try to go around and now continue. You can see that it can change its behavior because it's not updating as quickly. Um, but, you know, normally the default value on the value that you always want to use is 0 0.01. Again, you can change this for performance if you want to. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Um, now this pack is really simple. That's why it's only $6, um, you know, compared to other similar packs on the marketplace. Uh, it's very simple, obviously, but it's not, you know, as expensive. And if you just want a simple AI, so your vehicles just move, that's the only thing that you want to go to a specific vector and they move. This is the pack for you, obviously. Now, if you want complex systems, uh, you know, or more complex AIs, obviously that will depend on your project. So I can really, uh, you know, prepare anything from my end so that it fits exactly your project. Uh, but if I get a lot of requests for, for people for certain features or certain things that you want me to do with AI, I will do it and I will update the pack for free. So let me know in the comments what you think, what you want me to improve. I always appreciate that. And yeah, if you could buy the pack, that will obviously help me a lot. So thank you. And yeah, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching and bye-bye.